Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now when we left off we were attempting to court Liena right here and I'm actually hoping that uh, maybe in this episode we might be able to push forward quite nicely so perhaps we should discuss a future together. Yes, well I've been thinking about that. I insist that my husband conduct himself according to the highest standards. Oh dear. Uh, let's try it. Oh, success. Okay. Phew. Lucky, lucky. All right. Okay, so they're all 59% chance. I guess I will try charm. I can only hope that if they come to know my loyalty, they will accept me. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's do it. Very nice. Yes, I think I would be honored to accept your proposal. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, it only took two times to be able to do that. Anyway, there are usually financial arrangements to be made. Aldric, Aldric, Aldric is the guy, Aldric is the man, let's go and see him. Okay, so where is he? <laughs> let's hope that he hasn't been killed. Yes, alright, so he was last seen at Hongard. Ah, uh, me so hongi, me want bagel. Yeah, okay, well anyway, let's have a look and see where is Hongard. Ah, Hongard is actually right there, very nice indeed. Okay, so... Oh yes, uh, by the way, when I was in Praven, I actually bought a, uh, I bought an Enterprise in the previous episode. I actually uh, neglected to mention that, but I did buy that. As you can see, I've just got so much money that uh, it doesn't really, uh, it's not really necessary, but I think that it's good to keep up the amount of cash that we have just in case of an emergency. You never know. There might very well be a time when we really desperately need money. And uh, in which case it's kind of required. This is oh yeah, I I see so now here's here's what's really cool about this. You know how Calradia is in Warband? This is basically how that is, because Praven is right here, and I would assume that what happens is over the years the water starts creeping in and, and covers up this area, and that's why Praven is on the coast in in Warband, because obviously Warband is is in the future at this point. And then, of course, you have Nord territory right here and going up there. And that's usually where, well, this is usually where Wercheg is, kind of, in uh, in Warband. And uh, Sargoth, I, Sargoth is not usually here. Sargoth is usually up there somewhere. So, yeah, there's a little bit of jumbling around. But I can definitely see Warband in the map, which I think is really cool. I like that quite a bit. All right. So, uh, hopefully, I will be able to find this guy. He seems to be a bit of a slippery customer. What's actually going on here? Oh, hello. Okay, so Ospia has actually created an army. Uh, wait a second real quick. Okay, yeah, so tr stop the conspiracy. All right, so here's the thing. This particular quest, as far as I am aware, has nothing to do. Like, you can't do anything about this quest because the developers have not finished it. It is an unfinishable quest as far as I am aware. If you want to give me the solution to it, if there is actually a solution, then by all means let me know down in the comments. But if there isn't, then well, there you go. That's that's it. Because the quest, uh, from what I have seen on forums and uh, various things like that, there have been no indications of it actually being finishable. So... We'll see. Anyway, I wish to discuss the final terms of my marriage with Liena. Very well, then. All right. So, Liena to marry Barney. All right. So, I'm going to have to pay him a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of... What? Are you serious right now that... Uh... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think... I think it will work with about 50... Let's, let's, let's just give him... Let's just give him 100, 100k. There you go. I, I just wanted to make sure. I could have technically given him 30k, but I wanted to make sure that everything was going to go smoothly. Anyway. Splendid! Let us conduct the ceremony then. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Oh, I can hunt for voting rights. Personally, I don't really care about that too much. Alright, so where do I actually go now? I think I go back to Liena, right? I would assume that I go back to her, and then I speak to her, and then I say, Hey, everything's great. This is wonderful. And uh, hopefully then, um, you know, we can uh, get down to business, so to speak. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so I don't think she's actually here in this, uh, in this train of people. So I think she's probably still in Praven somewhere. Or not, as the case may be. Oh dear. 
Okay, I guess I'm going to have to look and see what's actually going on. Uh, she has minus two relation with us? Why does she has why does she have minus two? Oh, I think it actually already happened. Yes, I think this actually already happened. That's actually kind of crazy. Okay, so there you go. Is a member of the Bear Tilde, a secret society based in the lands of the Vlandians. <laughs> I didn't know we were a secret society now, but that's actually quite fun. Anyway, so she was close by to this. So let's track that real quick. Uh, that's over here. Okay. Wait a minute. Uh, we're, we're at war against the Kuzate Khanate or something? I'm actually unsure what's going on with that. But otherwise, let's just continue onward down here. Maybe we have actually declared war against someone. Ah, we have declared war against Azurai. I'm not entirely sure why we would, would why we would decide to do that, to be fair, because I personally feel like we should concentrate on the Empire. But, well, who am I to say? I'm not the leader of a faction, am I? I am just some, some bumbling fool, yes. Which uh, will hopefully rule over the entirety of the area in due time. But I'm hopeful that she's probably here. No, she is not. Right, so where is she now? Last seen near Turby. Turby is over there. Oh, okay, so we're actually going along the right area, but uh, I don't know why she's all, she's gone all the way over here, to be fair. That is uh, a little bit... Ah, is she actually in the army? She might actually be in the army. Yes, she is. All right, so let's talk to the other members of the army. Liena, hello. I have seen your father. So, what a wedding. I look forward to a happy married life with you. All right, so about your position in the clan. Let me inspect your troops. Should I inspect your troops? Wow, she has an absolutely fantastic army. Maybe I want to do a little bit of something with this. Maybe I want to take some, uh, some, <laughs> take some of these. I mean, they're pretty cool, you know, they're pretty nice. And she does have an overwhelming amount of people, which is not actually good for her because she's actually going to lose a whole bunch. So, should I, should I actually, I, I don't even have enough, to be honest. I guess she's just going to have to lose a couple. So, we'll just give her a couple of Batanians, I suppose. And that will be that. I would like to take a couple more. There we go. All right. So, um, let's have a look here. There's something I'd like to discuss. No, about your position in the clan. I would like to assign you a new role. No, I don't really want to do any of that. Actually, do I? Let me actually have a look at my clan screen here for a second. Okay, so there you go. She's She actually is a party member now. So she is actually going to be going off and doing whatever she wants to do and so on. Not entirely sure how children are made. <laughs> not, not you know, obviously not in real life, but in the game, you know, how, how, how is that done? I guess I will have to, uh, <laughs> I have to check that. All right, so I have actually looked up how to have a child in Bannerlord, and basically how it, how it works is you need to have your spouse join your party. So you need to literally say to them, hey, can you disband your party? Can you uh, come and join me? And then they will do that, and then all you have to do is run around for about 10 in-game days or something along those lines, and then you're going to be able to... Uh, and then you see a message that will basically say that you're spouse is expecting a child and then it will take a bit of time for that to happen so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to do that and we're going to um we're going to say uh parties right yeah parties so we're going to say that she has to disband up has to disband her party and we're right there right next to her basically so theoretically she should join us I, I think, or she'll go over, she'll go over to the castle. Okay, that's not actually what I wanted to do. We're all going to Flintor Castle, then we're going our separate ways. Well, go on then. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit harsh, isn't it? That is a little bit harsh. Okay, so she's going to go to Flintor Castle. And I suppose I should probably follow her, to be honest. Because we want to get her in my army as soon as possible. Uh, there's one thing I actually want to do here, though. I want to buy some food, because I actually only have 129. Well, I say only, but of course that's quite a bit, isn't it? There we go. That's good enough. Alright, so Flintall Castle, where is that? It's going to be very far away. It's all the way over... I always forget where it is. It's over... Isn't it over here somewhere? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So she's obviously going to make her way back there. 
and I, should, I suppose I should probably just go over there myself as well, and then we will meet her there. Whoa, okay, do you see Kaladog's army? He's got over a thousand units, but obviously the army that we were just a part of had over 1700, wasn't it? 1700 or 1600 or some craziness like that, so yeah. It is definitely getting to a little bit more end game here, even though uh, the obviously the Southern Empire and the Northern Empire are still kind of fighting it out with a lot of... Wait a minute. I think the Northern Empire is destroyed. I think they have completely been, been disintegrated, to be honest. Let's actually just take a quick look. Yes, the Northern Empire has been destroyed. The Western Empire has been destroyed. Batania is starting to gain back their strength. Vlandia is actually ha having quite a bit of strength. And we are at war against the Kuzate, who have zero strength. And Azurai have 1,100. But that's basically it. Sturgia, sadly enough, only has 136 remaining. However, the Southern Empire, as you can quite clearly see, has an overwhelming majority with 14,600. I don't know how I'm supposed to fight against something like that, but we're going to try. And who knows? Maybe we'll be in a situation where at some point it will give us an opportunity to, you know, really sink our claws into the opponent and uh, hopefully try to take them out as best we can. So, yeah, anyway, we're here at Flintold Castle, and she is here as well, so we will take her into our party. And let's actually just take a quick look at this. Yeah, the production is, by the way, extremely bad, so I think I'm going to just increase prosperity change. And there we go. All right, so now what I would like to do is I would actually like to go down... I don't really, I don't want to do anything with, with that, thank you very much, but I would like to go down to Azurai territory and see if we can maybe fight a couple of vassals, maybe take something. I wouldn't mind having a town of my very own to uh, rule over, if at all possible, so I'm thinking that that is probably going to be our next goal. Alright, so this is actually the first time we are going to be in a battle against the Azurai vassals. Now bear in mind that Azurai itself, as a faction, unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, does not have every single one of their troops unlocked for use by the player. I'm not entirely sure whether it is available for the AI, but that is a that is pretty, pretty sad, to be honest, because I feel like they're a really cool looking faction, but uh, yeah. That's also uh, a bit of an issue, but yeah, well, whatever the case, let's tell these guys to uh, move ahead here, and of course we are going to have our cavalry just charge these guys straight up, because we can just take them out relatively, whoa, that was actually very easy, wasn't it? Yes, we have a lot of cavalry now, we have completely switched our uh, army composition, dependent on what kind of faction we're with. Pretty crazy, so let's tell everyone to actually charge in here. Shouldn't have probably told my cavalry to charge in, but I kind of wanted to eliminate the enemy horsemen as much as possible. So that's that's kind of the reason why I did that. Now thankfully these guys aren't getting into any kind of circle formation. If they were getting into a circle formation right now, it would actually be quite effective, as they do have a lot of spears. But unfortunately they don't appear to want to do that for some unknown reason. So I will just be randomly attacking a bunch of them and trying to take them down. I'm trying to level up my riding skill as well because let's face it, I haven't been able to really ride anything spectacular in this entire series so far because as I said before, my initial plan was to be a thrown weapon heavy infantry specialist of some kind and obviously that didn't really work out because it seems like infantry focused play as the player it's actually very difficult. It's very difficult to pull that off when everyone else is using horses and stuff like that. But anyway, we're just going to let people go because, let's face it, if we let people go, our um, our wife, <laughs> our wife now, is actually going to be quite happy with us. And you can see that she's right there. We actually need to move her up in the list, in my opinion, because she probably wants to get a bit of fisticuffs in herself and, uh, you know, beat on some people. And uh, yeah, we're just going to leave all of that stuff there. We're going to take all of this. And that's actually a pretty nice weapon. So I guess I'll take that just for selling or breaking down in the smithy. And is there anything else going on here? Doesn't seem like it. What kind of gear does she actually have on, by the way? Because 
I'm wondering whether it's actually good and whether I can actually even replace it. Yeah, I can actually replace it. She's not wearing a cloak. She's actually not wearing a cloak. Okay, there you go. There's a there's a there's a scarf for you. Even though we're in the desert, it's probably not the best idea to wear a scarf in the desert. Let's face it. But uh, otherwise, everything seems fine for her. She's using a Flandy Flandy and heavy lance and a mace, and she's got a reinforced cavalry shield. She's got absolutely insane horse armor. Look at that horse armor. How crazy. She's also wearing some really, really nice gear in general. Her her chest piece alone is 46 body armor. I'm actually thinking of stealing this. Should I steal this? I'm so sorry that you're naked right now. Don't worry. Just uh, just give me a little bit of time here real quick because this is actually better than what I have. Okay, so there we go. Okay, fantastic. Whew, okay, maybe she... Did she notice? Do you think she noticed that I stole her stuff? Hopefully not. I didn't steal her, her horse armor, which I think was... Uh, well, I could have, you know. I could have done that, and then that would have been pretty awful, to be honest. Anyway, let's see if I can get this guy into a fight before their army catches up. Because as you can see, Azurai is not a pushover by any means. They still have almost 400 units in their army. But if that's their biggest that they can muster... They're going to be in a really bad situation. They're going to be in a super bad situation. Very similar to that of uh, Sturgia, as I shift around in my chair. Anyway, let's see if we can uh, maybe do something about this. I, I actually really like the environments in Azurai. I don't know whether you can see, but the, uh, the sand, it looks really cool. I feel like it looks really, really cool. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But anyway, let's go for a shield wall right here. And uh, we'll see if I can maybe pick off a couple of these guys. Oh, take that. Wow, crazy damage. And usually, you know why I'm doing so much damage? I'm actually hitting the head of the opponent. And that's making a big, big difference. Anyway, let's get our archers. I think I'm actually going to do a little bit of a strategy here. I don't know whether the enemy is actually going to attack us. But what I would like to do is have our archers on the top of this little little area here. I don't think this is really going to make too much difference because it's unlikely that the enemy will actually start moving forward to be to be fair because they're, they're probably not really that pleased about anything of what we're doing at the moment. So there's also that. So let's just go and do a wedge formation for our cavalry. We actually do have quite a lot of cavalry at the moment. I uh, actually would like a, uh, a note of how much cavalry I actually have. I guess I can look this way. Yeah, I've got 39. So that's actually pretty cool. And let's tell these guys to follow me a little bit as well. Now, technically, I don't have to use tactics, but I'm just kind of wanting to get a bit more used to using them, especially in a somewhat safer environment. Because let's face it, fighting against Azurai at this point, it's going to be pretty safe in comparison to fighting against the Southern Empire, for example. The Southern Empire is going to be so incredibly strong that it's going to be very, very dicey about what I can do to uh, to fight them. So let's tell my infantry to charge in right here. And whoa, that guy actually blocked that. Did you see that? That was very, very well done of him. And I think what I'm going to do is... I think we'll just charge. We'll just charge. We'll charge everyone in and uh, we'll see what, what actually happens. But uh, yeah, you got to bear in mind as well, by the way, that when I charge ranged units in, what they're going to do is they're going to move forward into effective range and then they will start firing. They won't switch to melee combat immediately. So yeah, if someone gets into melee range, then of course they'll switch to melee combat. But if they don't, then they will continue firing away and that's absolutely fine. So when I do charge my archers, don't don't get don't get worried about that. Don't get worried about that. It's all going to be fine, because you know that's what happens in warband as well. But a lot of people say don't charge your archers. Yeah, usually that would definitely be a, a good idea. You know, just you know, don't charge your archers most of the time. But in these kinds of situations where it is a very obvious victory, you don't really need to worry about it, in my opinion. Anyway, there's 5.1 renown. Obviously, we gained a huge amount of renown for that siege defense that we did a couple of episodes ago and it would be really nice to uh, maybe do that again but I'm gonna let this guy go there we go our relation has increased oh fantastic look at it look at his look wow look at his eyes he's like oh yeah he's he's going he's going crazy right there anyway there we go I'm not going to be taking any of these prisoners because we're kind of far away from any 
friendly town, kind of. Uh, I, I actually don't know what they go into. Let's actually have a look here. So infantry goes into what we want. So we want them to go into vanguards most of the time. So let's do infantry then. And we've got some Batanians here as well. And we still have some Sturgeons as well, so we're just going to continue leveling them up until they inevitably might perish in combat. We've got a whole bunch of war horses as well, no doubt. So that's definitely going to make everything much, much easier in regards to leveling up the Vlandians. And there you go. It seems like these prisoners that I have right here are not actually willing to join us at any point. So it might very well be the case that I will just need to sell them or put them into a uh, donation dungeon or something along those lines. That's what I'm going to call it. The, the donation dungeon. Yes, exactly. Uh, fantastic, isn't it? Okay, so... Ooh, this is actually quite nice. Hmm. This is going to be very good for Liena. She really does need a much better shoulder piece. So hopefully that's going to make up for me stealing her body armor. Uh, yes, okay, so... We do have these guys, but obviously they're way, way too strong for us at the moment. So I will just be leaving them well alone. And instead, we will try to maybe take a castle or something like that. I really wanted to take a town. Don't get me wrong. I really do want to do those town sieges. I think they're super fun. But as it stands right now, it's just not, uh, it's just not very viable. So I'm just going to continue you know, having to power ourselves up a little bit here and there, maybe wait for the army of the Vlandians to come over and see if they can, you know, maybe help us out a little. Oh my. Wow. This is cool. This is so, you know, the, you know, the, you know that word picturesque. Yeah. The word for this is picturesque. Look at how fantastic this looks and the, the whole sweeping nature of the dunes is very accurately represented here. It feels so good to ride your horse down here. So yeah, that's really, really nice. And it's so clean looking as well. It's like very white sand, very, very nice little patterns everywhere. And it's just looking really, really cool. Wow. I gotta say the environments look fantastic. They really do. They really look great. And uh, I can't wait to actually fight in more environments like this. I haven't even fought in Kuzade Khanate ter territory yet. And I can't, can't wait to see what that is like. And uh, a lot of people actually are saying to me that Kuzade Khanate are dominating in their game. And the Kuze Khanate was the first faction to be eliminated in mine. So it's really weird how that works, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very weird. So let's get these guys to just auto-delegate for themselves. And we'll just tell these guys to auto-delegate as well. And we'll tell these guys to follow me. And I'm going to go for a wedge, I think. There we go. Go for a nice wedge. Is it a potato wedge or a cheese wedge? You decide. Can I actually... Yes, oh, a little bit of murder. A little bit of murder, but not a lot. Not a lot. And we'll just tell our cavalry to charge in now so that they can do whatever they want to do. I feel like the cavalry... Uh, the cavalry AI has become so much better as well. So when you're commanding cavalry, it is so good to watch them do their hit and run attacks because they're literally going in, they're attacking, they're doing good damage. And then they're getting out of there, and then they're going back in and doing the same thing again and again. And that really makes a huge difference, because let's face it, in Warband, you had to do that manually. You know, you had to do that manually. And even if they were able to do something like that, usually, more often than not, you would have your units get stuck in the inevitable amounts of infantry that would stop them. And that's obviously a big problem. But in this... No, that, that does not happen, which is really, really fantastic. So there we go. You're indeed a man of honor, sir. And I've increased my relation. Very nice indeed. All right. Okay, so we'll take some more of these horses. Thank you very much. What is the, what is the downside to taking horses? Are, is there any downside? Because I have so many of these things. I mean, I literally have 109 
of the desert horses and 101 of the steppe horses. I must be moving like the speed of light or something like that. Really? But, uh, yeah, anyway, there you go. That's absolutely fine. And we will have a look at this castle because that was my main reason for coming over here. And then I came across that vassal and I was like, okay, we should probably fight him, you know. We should probably fight him. Okay, so let's have a look and see exactly where this guy's army is. Why is he here? <laughs> Why is he here? We're at war against Azurai. This would be one of the best opportunities for us to maybe make a little bit of a, a little bit of extra headway against the Southern Empire, because we might be able to capture a couple of extra fiefs. But unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be happening. So that's a bit problematic. Okay, well, I guess I will besiege the castle then, and we will see if we can maybe take down the walls. Or not, as the case may be, because as you can see right here, we have Unkid coming in. Hello. All right. So it seems like I will have to leave, which is unfortunate. I really did not want to have to do that. But, well, if needs must, if needs must, then that's that's just how it goes. Oh, hello. Hello, Vlandian. I will help you, I, I think. Am I helping? Am I helping the Vlandian? Yes, I hope so. Is this a Vlandian? Yes, he is. Okay. He's actually a defector of some kind, so I guess I'm just going to send the troops in because we are kind of overwhelming this guy. And look at this, Laska has gained a skill point and she's actually leveled up, so it's about time that we will be able to get her another focus point somewhere else. There we go, so we saved that guy a little bit and we will let this one go. They, they've got some really... They've got some really fiendish looking grins, don't they? They're like, ho oh, ho ho, you let me go. Now I will dress as a clown and haunt your dreams. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that, you know? But don't don't mention it to them, because otherwise they'll, they'll get really upset. Anyway, let's move on. And uh, let's have a look at this guy. Okay, so he's he's seemingly fine. And we probably both want to run away from <laughs> this army. Uh, I'm, I, I'm just very surprised that this fellow is not doing anything. Like, he's literally just running around not doing anything at all. Maybe I can call for an army. Because if we call for an army, we might have a pretty decent shot at things. So, uh, I'm going to support Ingaltha here because he hates us. And I thought, why not? Let's try and support him a little bit. Let's spend 100 influence. I've got 400, or I had 500 of it. Now I have 400, so I think that's pretty decent. The Vlandians will start grunting, uh, grunting? Haha. <laughs> Granting lords exclusive hunting rights to nearby forests. This decision caused a split in the council. Mmm. Interesting. All right. So this guy has 1,239 people in his army. And I'm thinking to myself, why? Why? Why is he doing this? He's monopolizing everyone, and their cohesion is at 100. So uh, who am I going to get? Gonna get Morkan, Ingaltha, Mor So there's Morkan and then Morkon. Okay, that's hilarious. Okay, well, I guess I will just try and get as many people as I can in my army, and then we'll be able to fight this guy in really big terms. And I have no idea how much this is going to be. They're gonna take so long to get here as well. Look at that. This guy's gonna take way too long. And also this guy and this guy. And this guy. I'll wait for these, but that, that, that's it. That's all I'm waiting for. We have 600 people, apparently, according to my army. So we'll see if we can maybe do something about that. And on top of that, I'm going to wait around about here, I think. Maybe we'll do a tournament. Maybe there's a tournament in the in the town, and uh, we might be able to spend a little bit of time here, you know? I think that, we, that would be quite fun. <sighs> okay, you know what? In the first episode. Do you remember the first episode when I got headshot all the way across the arena um, map? Well, I'm going to try and see if I can do a little bit better. Whoa. This mace is really good. Right. Well, yes. So, as I said, you remember how that was a thing, right? Well... I thought, why not? Let's try and uh, maybe do something here. <laughs> the bow is actually kind of hilarious. The bow seems very fun to use. Uh, careful. Nice headshot. Oh, 
I can't believe I missed that. And then he cut him down. He's basically stole my kill right there. You scoundrel, get back here. Get back here. Uh, yeah, well, anyway. The point is, is that I think it's hilarious to uh, play in the practice fights because the AI is just so funny to, to play against. The tournaments are a little bit of a different... Uh, different kind of feeling to the practice fights because the practice fights have nothing really riding on it and you can just literally have a bunch of fun. So that's kind of the reason why I like kind of doing them. Ah, <laughs> oh, too close, sir. Oh, oh. Uh, yes, blocked. Did you see that? I blocked him. That was a hired blade. Can you believe it? Don't think you can. Oh dear. Oh, I, yeah, I, I tried to I tried to block the thrust, but it was just too late. Just too late. I was out of position right there. I thought to myself, he's going to go for an overhead. He's going to go for an overhead. But no, 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 it was too, too, too much. Too much. Well, I'm actually currently shadowing Unkid's army, and I'm pretty sure he's going to try and take something, or at the very least, yes, he, as you can see right here, is besieging Garantor Castle. So the thing is, is that I can't really get too close to him because he's going to intercept me, no doubt. And that is not going to be, that's not going to be pleasing to me, not at all. So uh, yeah, this is a bit of a worry to me. I guess what I can do is level up a couple of people and then we will just try and see whether we can get past. And then if we can get past, then we might be able to actually get into the garrison which would be quite nice. I love siege defenses. Oh, Amalgan, Amalgan, don't go over there, man. Come on, you don't want to die? Oh dear. I've led him into a trap. I have led him into his demise. I am so sorry. Wait a minute, Ingaltha, come over here. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. Can we help him? I think it's too late. Is it? No, it's never too late. There we go, we made it. Okay, help Amalgan. Let's do this. We've got 312 against the enemy's 270. I think we might be able to achieve a victory here. If we can achieve a victory, then we will be hailed as heroes to whoever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but anyway, let's have a look. Right. So we've got some trees over there, and we've got some grass. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I say, you know that I actually say that quite often. I say, okay, so let's have a look here. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, so what am I looking at? What am I looking at? I'm looking up some trees, I'm looking up some grass, and so on and so forth, and that's basically it. But anyway, uh, let's see if I can maybe... Yeah, there we go. That guy blocked that one, which is absolutely fine. Take out that fellow. Ow. It's a little bit, a little bit mean. How dare you? And maybe I can do something with this guy. Nope, nope, he... Uh, he cut himself off a little bit too early right there. Let's tell my my cavalry to actually charge in, and we'll tell these guys to charge in as well, because, wait a minute, we're not going to charge the cavalry in just yet, because I think I want my infantry to hit their infantry first, and then we'll see what we can do. Got to be careful about those, those spears. Oh, well, the cavalry's coming in anyway, so I might as well, right? Okay, well, let's just tell those guys to skirmish a little bit, tell these guys to do whatever they want to do, and then we will try our best. We're losing a couple of warriors and things, but that is to be expected, of course. So much damage being dealt right now. Absolutely so much damage being dealt. And maybe I can actually get a couple of kills. Maybe I can actually level up my polearm proficiency. That would be quite nice. Oh, we're doing quite a bit of damage right there. And interrupting things. That's basically the thing that you've got to bear in mind. That also running people down with your horse does have a pretty nice effect. Because it does disrupt them from doing what they want to do. And obviously what they want to do is deal damage. But if you can prevent them from dealing damage and... Uh, prevent a multitude of people from dealing damage, then you're going to be doing a pretty decent job there. Even if you're not killing them, I guess. So, you know, that's the kind of thing I tell myself when I miss 10 million shots in a row, because it's, ha it's happened, you know, it's happened. But uh, thankfully, we seem to be actually achieving a victory here. Vlandia, very powerful indeed. I have a feeling that if we were in the same position as Sturgia, we probably would have ended up 
having a pretty difficult time of things. Unless Azurai is just a, a little bit weaker, dependent on what's actually going on, because obviously Sturgia, we were up against most of the time, Batania and the Empire units. And I personally feel like, as I've said before, I feel like Batania is pretty good, and I feel like the Empire is very good. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I remember saying in the Let's Talk Factions video, because obviously, you know, I made a video on Bannerlord beforehand, before it released, and I talked about all the factions and everything and what my thoughts on those were. And basically, I said, hey, the Empire and Vlandia seem very strong, and uh, Batania obviously seems very strong as well with their Fian units, but that was obviously before they changed them to maybe not be, not be archers, but... Yeah, I think they, they they changed it so that the hero units are actually archers and the regular units are just thrown weapon guys. So yeah, there's also that. But anyway, we're just going to let these guys go to whoever whoever wants to take them. And we will be taking all of these desert horses. Is there anything for us? This is actually quite nice, but I'm going to just take it to sell. This is nice to sell as well. And that seems about right. And we saved him. We saved Amalgan which is exactly what I wanted to do. So there we go, fantastic. Now he is obviously going to be joining us, but he has a much, well, much lesser army than he did beforehand, which is unfortunate. But we did stop the advance of the Azurai, which I think is a uh, pretty nice, well, side benefit, I guess. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.